So it's Margaret River week this week on The Real Review. And of course, Margaret River is famous for its Cabernet, but about 50% of the region is planted to white varieties. The other 50, of course, red. And of the whites, I guess the most famous is Semillon Sauvignon Blanc, which is a ubiquitous uh, everyday drinking white. But the most famous white wine in terms of quality would undoubtedly be Chardonnay. And we've got three Chardonnays here and a Chenin Blanc, which I'll talk about in a moment. The Chardonnays are Woodlands, Woodlands Brook Vineyard Chardonnay 2020 from one of the oldest vineyards in the region. Then we have Arlwood Chardonnay 2020, uh, 2019, that wine is. And then we have Graylin from another of the very old vineyards in the region. And this is the 19, the 18 Reserve Chardonnay Wildberry Springs, which is the name of the vineyard, 2018 Graylin. And finally, a Chenin Blanc, which is one of the up and coming and most exciting varieties in the West at the moment. And this is Marywood Park, 2019 Chenin Blanc. And that comes from up north in the Yelling Up area. I'm Hugh and Hook, and you're watching The Real Review. Now, I'll bet if you asked any wine expert what were the first six wineries to be established in Margaret River, they would probably forget to mention Woodlands. Woodlands went through a bit of a, a hiatus when they were not making wine, they were selling their grapes to other people. And um, that's why probably I think it fell off the radar for a little while, but it's very much back on the radar now. The next generation of the Watson family who founded it are in charge and they're doing a fantastic job. So this is the, the vineyard, incidentally, was planted originally in 1973, so very early. This one is from their second vineyard, which is just down the road from the original one. It's called Woodlands Brook. Slightly confusing name, but there you go. And the bouquet, wow, that is classic Margaret River. It's got all sorts of lovely complexities there. Grapefruit is part of the, very much the, uh, the dominant thing with, uh, with Margaret River Chardonnay, it seems to me. But there's also creamy lees characters there. A little bit of cashew nutty oak influence. But the oak is very subtle. It's not heavily, heavily done at all. Lovely, there is a touch of spice there, a little bit of clove, a bit of cinnamon perhaps in the background. Really quite a complex nose. The wine is, it's intense, very lively, got a long finish, and it's still quite fruit driven. There is artifact there. There are those creamy leaves characters and a touch of oak influence, but the main thing is the fruit. The fruit really drives that wine. The acidity is beautiful and cleansing on the aftertaste. And the food, the recipe we've chosen to go with this wine is Neil Perry's barbecued John Dory with pistachios, preserved lemon and caper salsa. It would go very well, I believe. The wine is the 2019 vintage, Arlwood Chardonnay. Um, and uh, what a beautiful label. I've always admired the label of Arlwood. I'm not sure if you can see it closely, but it looks like a very ornate bookmark. Most unusual and most effective, I think. And the first thing that comes to my nose is the, this heady aroma, which is just so Chardonnay and so Margaret River. It's very voluminous, it's opulent, it's complex, it's full of sp spicy, smoky, nutty oak and uh, barrel ferment characters with a little touch of reduction perhaps, which helps to give an extra facet to the wine, a little bit of struck match character. But underlying it all is very much the intense grapefruity, lemony, citrusy character of Margaret River Chardonnay. Beautiful. Let's have a, a taste. And that really is a very intense wine, but it's compact, it's delicate, it's restrained, but there is intensity and length of flavour. I think if you compared the north with the south of Margaret River Chardonnay, you would find the north is generally more full-bodied, richer and fuller, and the south they're more restrained, more acid-driven, crisper, and perhaps more delicate. But that's a lovely, lovely wine. I could drink a lot of that. The dish we're recommending is prawns with spring vegetables, citrus, and dill dressing. <laughs> so we've got company. So I think that would be an excellent choice.
So if you're visiting Margaret River, the place to go is Caves Road, where you'll find all of the, or many of the established, long established wineries, and it's a really, really important area. Graylin is one of the vineyards that has been on that road since the very early days on Caves Road. It was planted in 1975, and it was established by the Hutton family, Graham and Marilyn Hutton, and hence the name Graylin. This one, of course, is the 2018 Reserve Chardonnay. And the nose, wow, that bouquet is just explosive. That is a powerful, powerful nose. Very, very typical Margaret River. Concentrated grapefruit laced with all of these lovely extra things that barrel fermentation brings. That roasted hazelnut character, spicy touch of struck match. Beautiful. Very, very complex indeed. Let's have a taste. It's quite a full-bodied Chardonnay. Lots and lots of richness to it. Those flavors, flavors keep unrolling as it progresses from the front of your palate to the back. Um, the whole thing is quite full bodied, but it's enlivened and kept fresh and lively by its acidity. It's got beautiful acidity. And again, the analogy of grapefruit comes very much to mind. Now, the dish that we recommend with this wine is uh, cheats cow soy with herbs and charred pineapple. Cow soy is a Vietnamese dish which involves chicken, noodles, and laksa paste. So the, the powerful flavors, spicy flavors come from the laksa paste. And the wine we're tasting now is Marywood Park Chenin Blanc 2019 from Margaret River. And this is from another branch of the Wright family um, a different branch to the to the family that owns Voyager Estate. And uh, this vineyard is in the northern end of Margaret River, the Yelling Up area, which is slightly warmer. This wine is still quite young at two years of age. Um, you can still smell the oak. It's been barrel fermented. And I think with another a few more months in the in the bottle, you will smell less of that oak as it becomes integrated. It's spicy, it's complex. The fruit characters are a little more difficult to identify. It's such a complex wine, but it's certainly spicy. And I, I would expect with a bit more time in the bottle, the apple cake and baked apple pie kinds of characters that you find in Chenin Blanc uh, will come out more and more. But this one takes Chenin to a different level. It's much more complex. Let's taste it. Gorgeous. And they haven't tried to make it too dry. It's soft, it's fruity, it's not obviously sweet, but I don't think it's bone dry either. There's this just lovely balance and harmony and mouthfeel. It's just so Moorish and so delicious. Uh, the finish is clean and dry and that's what you want. It's appetizing, it makes you want to have another sip. But it has intensity of flavour and it keeps you interested. There's nothing simple or, or, or monodimensional about that, which can happen with Chenin Blanc sometimes. What kind of food would you have with a, a wine like this? We've suggested a chicken salad, so that it involves chicken, avocado and whitliff with a walnut vinaigrette. If you've enjoyed this, follow us and subscribe to The Real Review.